cheap electricity, yeah, yeah, cheap electricity, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, what do we got here? Power bill. <laughs> I got the cheapest electricity there is. <laughs> Who? <laughs> said that the electricity was cheap. <laughs> it's not very cheap at all. What's up guys, Technicals here. I've noted before many times that I've got pretty cheap power for a residential miner, coming in at around seven and a half cents, a little bit over that, and that's pretty cheap. Way back in the day, 10 cents was the norm. Now calculator websites put it at about 12 cents, and people are always commenting on my videos how they have 20 cent power, 40 cent power. Me, I've been sitting pretty at seven and a half cents, so that means that it makes a lot more sense for me to keep my miners running on certain things when it doesn't for the majority of people because I have that cheap power. But as of last week, I was educated, let's say, on a little known aspect of your electricity bill that not many people really encounter, something called the demand charge. So if this charge stands, which it hopefully shouldn't, uh, it's gonna effectively double my power bill for the next 12 months. It locks me into that for the next 12 months. So we're gonna get into what it is, why I incurred it, what you can do to avoid it. On the technicals, let's get into it. All right, so first up, let's take a look at my usage historical. This is from January 9th, 2020 of this year through current. So today's the 22nd. So as you can see, there's kind of like a ramp up there. Uh, that's, you know, early in the, the very first part of the year. That's when I first went online uh, with my S19J Pros. It kind of went up and there's some like downage there. That uh, when we see right, I'm pointing to the screen with my hand as if you can see my hand. Right here, this is where I took the farm down to uh, build the shed, uh, the mining room and then a drop here when I did some other heavy maintenance. And as you can see, it's been creeping up. And then this fall here, that's when I took, uh, when I sold the L7 and sent it off. So now we've just been kind of um, steady mobbing from there. If you look right here at the bottom, it'll show you what my all time top total kilowatt hour usage was at 384, my low at 48, and my average at 277. But then last month, as I was updating my power cost, I was anxiously awaiting my power bill to see, to make sure I was in line with my current usage rate. And then I got this, as you can see, uh, demand charge $486 for uh, 9,273 kilowatt hours of usage, yielding a total power bill of $1,217. It should be about half that. So it effectively doubled uh, my total cost. This brings me up into the 12 cent range, which, you know, it's still not bad. You're saying, what are you crying about? But I didn't know what this demand charge was. I've heard about it before. So I go and set out to see what did I do? Did I use too much power? Uh, essentially, yes, that's exactly what it is. Just taking a look at it real quick, demand charge is the rate at which you consume electricity or the amount of power needed uh, at any given point in time. So if your usage is like this, it's just kind of constant and you're paying as you go along. If you have a big spike, that is a big stress on the grid. It's a big stress on the power company. The power company wants to be able to predict how much power they're gonna need to generate to sustain the grid. So if they don't know that you're gonna need a whole bunch of power at once and it spikes, it's a stress on the grid, it's a stress on the power company, and you're gonna pay for it. Now, as I read through all the documentation from my power company, I couldn't find any information on the demand charges, what the rate for that was, and what the threshold was for it, because obviously there's gonna be a threshold at which that spike is not going to register. It's gonna be okay because people come home from work and plug in their EVs, they come home and turn on their microwaves or whatever, and that's gonna increase their total power consumption. But at what rate, at what point does that really kick in? I could not find any information. So if demand charges still don't make sense to you, I put together a short analogy here. So this graph demonstrates what normal power usage is, but in this analogy, we're gonna use the amount of dick that your mom needs. For most of the month, she just wants a steady, consistent amount of dick. But on that, around that 10th day, for some reason, she really wants a lot and she wants it all at once. So me being the primary provider, that's a lot of demand on me. And so I'm gonna require something extra if I'm gonna have to put forth this kind of effort. So next time we talk to her, let her know she needs to pay my rent. So I called the power company. The engineer calls me back the next day or the line manager, I'm not sure of his title, uh, but he steered me in the direction of my usage analytics and told me that it was on Sunday, I believe it was the 15th of March. At sometime early in the morning, there was a massive spike in demand registering 70 kilowatts. Now it shouldn't take you long to do the math on that, but if you've got 70,000 watts at 240, that's 291 amps of total demand at that given point, that 15 minute window, uh, 
it's a 200 amp service. So without being fully educated in this, uh, you know, a 200 amp service pulling 291 amps for a brief period of time, yeah, maybe that would work, but I'd imagine that there are safeguards in place in the transformer, up the line, on the meter, the main breaker itself, I don't know. Whatever it is that I have in my mining operation is incapable of pulling this many amps for any length of time. Uh, nothing short of a short uh, is gonna be able to pull this amount of amperage. And if it was a short, then the breakers would have caught it. Uh, the breakers, the main breaker, the transformer, something would have caught it. It just did not parse in my mind. But again, the line guy, the engineer, is just pulling from the analytics that's on his page. And so ultimately your boy gets stuck with the bill. $486 demand charge for 70 kilowatts of power that I allegedly used. So demand charges make absolute sense. If I was running a power company, I'd probably have something similar because you know, you've got to put more, you got to shovel more uranium in the core or you know, pump more uh, 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 pollutants in the atmosphere, whatever they do to make power. It's science, I don't know how it works, but the electricity company needs to be able to predict how much power is, uh, is the grid wants at any given time. And so if you come in, if everybody starts coming in, spiking it all over the place, that's gonna create a lot of problems for the power company. They're gonna to have to do infrastructure changes. They're gonna to have to you know, hire more people or move things around or switch out lines or whatever. So it makes total sense. But again, it just did not make sense that I could somehow pull 291 amps uh, in any given period of time, even a second, because if I plugged everything in in my building and my house all together, it probably still wouldn't come up with 291 amps. And because this is turning into a story time video, I'll just put together this dramatization of how the story played out from there. Hey girl, yeah, I know that's right. Hang on, I gotta call this guy about his power bill. Mm-hmm, there's something wrong with it. I don't know, I'm gonna call him now. Hello. Hello, is this Mr. Testicles? Yes. Hey, this is Jennifer Joe from uh, Power Company. Yeah, we saw that you called in a few days ago about your power bill. Well, actually, as it turns out, uh, a lot of our customers had a similar problem. It had to do with daylight savings time. It, uh, the meters thought that, uh, that two hours worth of usage would happen in, in like one instant and in singularity of time. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yep, yep, yep. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, bring your bill back down and we are so sorry about that. <laughs> I know, this is crazy, right? <laughs> so anyway, to make sure it don't happen again in the future, the meters have something called firmware. I'm not sure if you're familiar with firmware. Uh, it's yeah, like this science or computers or something like that. Anyway, they're going to go ahead and push firmware update to it so it won't happen again, but we are just so sorry about that. We appreciate you being a valued customer. So I pay less money? Yeah, you pay less money. All right, thank you. All right, bye-bye. And so ultimately... I was right. I should never doubt myself. I'm always right because it was the meter that was the problem. The time change, something with the firmware, the meter thought that two hours worth of time became one instant of time and the meter registered me as using 70 kilowatts of power all at once when that was clearly not the case. So I'm in the clear, but the most important thing I learned from this entire exchange is what the threshold is for demand charges. And that threshold is 50 kilowatts. I could not find this information anywhere in their do online documentation. I had to speak to the engineer to get this information. But once you go over uh, 50 kilowatts at any given point, at that point, the power company is going to see that and register you as a commercial user. You're going to get thrown into the higher tier rates and you're going to be locked in for a 12 month period. You need to know what that threshold is because if you get a great deal on some ASIC miners, have a new panel put in, something along those lines, uh, you want to make sure that you do not go over this threshold and that if you are going to go over this threshold that you make that call to the power company prior to make sure everything is peachy keen that, hey, I'm gonna go over this limit, what's the rate, you know, based on what I'm doing. Uh, it's just so they know to anticipate it, you might have to pay some upfront costs for some infrastructure upgrades, but if it locks you in and it keeps you in that honey rate, assuming you have a honey rate like I do, uh, then it's probably well worth it. So that's the squeeze, dodged a major bullet on that one, but that's why it's important to look at your power bill and make sure you're getting billed correctly. The power company was very forward about calling me and letting me know what the problem was instead of just kind of leaving me out in the wind and letting me pay that and then not you know, correcting it after the fact. So uh, be sure to check your power bills. Be sure that you know what the threshold is for your demand charge, even though that it's typically, the, the demand is typically what the total amp service is that you have. So it's very easy math to do, but, Important to know 
nonetheless. If you like videos like this or you like the little skit, uh, please subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Let me know what you think in the comments below because I'm not doing that again unless you guys like it. I'm The Technicals. See you next time.